hits how are you doing my guy we've, we've talked about some pretty heavy stuff today exhausted bro yeah talking about midori talking about act age talking about darwin incidents well, i mean what more can we do uh than to talk about more anime right yeah here we go yeah so um this isn't necessarily a oh, um, bits and pieces guys what's up hi how's it going uh this is not necessarily going to be like some sort of like massive discussion or some sort of like hot take in anime Bro, we sometimes for bps we say this and then it like two hours later okay. Top, topic wise is what i mean right <laughs> no so, I, I get you i get you do you remember how you got into anime in the first place uh, like do you remember it being like an exploration of your own did you reach out to somebody and ask what good anime is to watch did you like, you know, get handed, like, a DVD or a VCD at that time, or even a VHS. I don't know when you started watching anime. Uh, and, it's like, hey, check this out. So this is different than kid shows, right? Anime in kid yeah. show form, right? I think, I think it's probably so been... not di- like Siu Yun-Ti. It, it's probably different like... for us when we were growing up in Asia because of the fact that, you know, it's kind of part and parcel when you're turning on the TV. You're going to have some form of anime on there, like you said, right? Like or Dragon uh, Ball like, Z, like, like Chibi Maruku Chan or yeah. Doraemon, um, Dragon Ball Z at the time when I was watching anime, not Dragon Ball. Um, and then you also, of course, you know, from, from watching those, you then get into other things like Pokemon, Digimon, and then naruto bleach and whatnot but i would say like between you and me like it was kind of more just through osmosis just what was on tv and slowly seeing what we liked and then building on from there i think if i were to pinpoint a time where i would quote unquote started watching anime it would be when i watched the first two animes back to back when i was uh year seven so grade six sixth grade Mm -hmm. uh again my first ever i guess you would say mature slash adult anime in the grand scheme of things is Zero Experiment Lane, followed right after by Evangelion, the OG Evangelion. Yeah, what a shattered childhood you had. Jesus Christ. You yeah. must have had some identity issues after re- Dude, watching those. I remember watching uh, Zero Experiment Lane and on our CRT TV, I like my mind unraveled. I was like staring at the screen like very Zero Experiment Lane-esque. And then right afterwards, my friend is like, Oh yeah, Evangelion's pretty good. It comes out uh that was at the end of Evangelion's on VCD right now, Jason. I was like, "Yo, you should watch it." I was like, "Okay, cool. This yeah. sounds look Oh, robots. Oh, that's that looks fun and uh not that fun, but very rewarding, I would guess." Yeah. So, I would say that especially for a lot of people in Asia or at least a lot of people who are in the US and happen to be watching uh a tsunami um, so they they would get their anime fixed from there. Or Adult well, Swim. Or Adult Swim, yeah. I think Toonami is under Adult Swim. Yeah. So you would the Toonami itself was like a three hour time slot in like the early hours of like twelve to three AM where you would get all your anime. So it was actually kinda crazy that as a kid, like your exposure to anime was watching shit at two in the morning. It was fucking crazy. Mm. Um but that's No just Man's how, Land kind of thing. This is yeah. how it was, right? Um so a lot of it was very much like self exploration, finding things, and you know, seeing what we liked. But nowadays, I think that with the proliferation of anime and more people from the outside trying to get in, it's not as straightforward as just you know turning on the TV. Because it could the, be though. Well, well, who the fuck turns on the TV nowadays? Okay, well, you know what I mean. Okay, how about turn on Netflix yeah. and go to anime tab and just start watching? I guess. But the problem there though is the fact that like back then there wasn't a whole lot of anime to watch. Yes. Whereas and, now it's like there's so many shows that you can pick, not just from what's happening this year, but the whole catalog of anime from the last 40 years. Like right? what? There's like 40, 50 shows out per three months per year. Yeah. Whereas back then when I was watching Sir Experimentally and Evangelion, it was like maybe like 10. It's like the Samurai Shampoo of like 
you can list off maybe 10 to 12 shows that literally everyone had to watch because that's all there was. When I was a kid growing up and I would spend summers in Canada, I'd be watching YTV, which is like our version of like just whatever kids TV show was. Uh, and the anime rotation at the time was Beyblade, Pokemon. Uh, Four Wheel Drive. Dr- yeah. Uh, no, not for, no. I mean, in, in Canada, it wasn't super popular. Oh, but really? Ba- but Beyblade was huge. Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. I never got onto the Yu-Gi-Oh and Beyblade train. I love Beyblade. I, I, I remember. I, I was the four-wheel I remember, drive. I remember I, four-wheel drive too. I absolutely love that shit too. But I love that in Asia and Beyblade kind of grew out of it. Grew out of that too. So like you had kids who would have like the little plastic walks and they would just start battling and shit. You had kids who would go up to China and buy counterfeit uh, weights. Mm-hmm. Some of them with. Um, uh, it's a, it's a specific metal where like when you scratch it, it's it sparks. It sparks, yeah. yeah. So they they would buy those, and they were super illegal. Uh, yeah, you. I, I'm sure you must have heard on the news because my mom would tell me all the time, "All oh, those things are dangerous." Why? Fire, not fire. People put razor blades on them. <laughs> yeah, people put razor blades on their fucking because that's edgy and cool, right? Yeah. So you, you didn't think about the ramifications, but, but that at the was time. But, but that was me like watching in, in Hong Kong. It was. Chibi Maruku Chan mm-hmm. or CNC. It was Doraemon. Same Pokemon, thing. Right? Yeah. And then Canada. Or Digimon. Was, and D- Digimon. I actually saw more when I was in Canada, mm-hmm. funny enough. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, like, I remember like a long time ago, there was um, the, the, the the movie that they had for um, Digimon. Actually, was it, it came in a pack of cards. Yeah. My friend got it, right? Yeah. But what was crazy was that it wasn't in a CD shape. Mm. The disc was in a card shape. Right. That, to me, was like the craziest thing of all time for me. Because I, even to this day, I haven't seen anything like that at all. A DVD in the shape of a card, like an actual rectangular card. Mm. Fucking crazy. But that was like the sort of rotation of anime I had. So there wasn't a whole lot of choice. But now people are like spoilt for choice. And, you know, like... Choice just is just analysis paralysis, right? Mm-hmm, it's the mm-hmm. bane of a lot of people's existence when it comes to even looking. ours. Yeah, right. So how the fuck do you get started? So then, wait, I, is this uh, our anime origin story? No, this okay. is more sort of like talking about how people get into anime or how how to start watching anime. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. I want to introduce you to like a one hundred one. So I wanted to introduce you to the segment which I would like to call not super original, the beginner's guide. To watching anime. Wait, isn't this like anna We we did a BP on anime suggestions, right, and tags and stuff. Is that this one was, similar? That one was more like people on Reddit, right, like the Discord, just right? being like, "I want to watch an anime where the main character has glasses and they fight with a shovel." <laughs> yeah, and then someone will actually listen to anime, like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, like that kind of thing. Yeah. This is more like you don't even know what you want to watch, right? You don't even know how to get started. So mm-hmm. I thought, hey super original title why Mm -hmm. don't i type that into google and see what i get uh spoiler alert there's like 50 million of those kinds of infographics there's even a flow chart there's even a scholastic books called the beginner's guide to anime the flow chart one that's that one that one i'll 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 talk about later it's so long uh it is legitimately charlie from fucking sunny uh, always sunny in philadelphia level where like when you when you see it it's just one thin line on your screen, and then you when you hit zoom in. you hit the magnify, boom! It's like yeah. fifty million pixels worth of shit at the bottom. Uh, but that one's not even a beginner's because that that just goes down to too many levels. So I aggregated a bunch of different websites, a different a bunch of different articles that literally have the words "beginner's guide to anime" in the title. So this could be from news outlets, it could be from blogs, it could be from Medium, it could be from Reddit. Um, and just to sort of see, in terms of like specific people, or at least specific groups of people, how they would navigate the realm of looking for anime. How one should get started in the world of anime. Now, I say anime because manga is a whole different thing. It's really hard to, for people to get into manga because more often than not, for people to get exposed... Especially into, in the West. Yeah, exactly. Most people's first exposure into the medium is anime, mm-hmm. right? Rarely you're going to find somebody that read manga first and then grew into anime, you know, because most people grew up watching Dragon Ball and Naruto and whatnot, and nowadays everything is digital, 
right? And more 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 people have subscriptions to Netflix and Crunchyroll than say Jump Plus. Yeah, and also because in general, right, manga subscription services are not as streamlined and not well structured as anime streaming sites. So it's really hard to kind of read a lot that is available that is fractured by different publishers. But okay, let's hear. Let's hear. So I've got, I think, around 10, maybe 12 different Yo. ones. Some of them I might just skip because they're a bit too similar to others. But sure. these are all different ways for beginners to get into anime. And are you going to like ask my take on it? or uh, I like... would like for you to rate it on a score of 1 to 10. Okay, before that, let me give you the Occam's Razor of the real answer to you as someone's question of starting anime, just start somewhere. Yeah. Just, so, I mean, that's so, some of them actually kind of go into that. So uh, I'm going to present the first one, which is from movieweb.com, a oh, beginner's we're guide calling to anime. people out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to name names in terms oh, no, of like no, no, who, I, who actually wrote them, oh, no, no, no. but yeah, yeah, I yeah. will say where I got them from. Sure. Right? Sure. I'm, sure. I'm citing my sources. No, right? it's all good. It's all so good. this was published in uh, March, 2023. So actually fairly recent mm, mm, mm. um so starts off you might have grown up playing pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. perhaps you woke up on a saturday morning to watch dragon ball z you might have known a few people who were who wore obscure anime t-shirts to school Ooh. but today the world of anime has shifted into a totally different landscape since the rise of globalization in the 1950s the japanese form of film and television animation has quickly become a global phenomenon in 2022 the anime industry was valued at 28.61 billion dollars about the same as the entirety of the united states music industry growing at a whopping 9.8 percent year the industry is set to get even bigger and better as international production, development, and streaming services hop on the anime bandwagon. Wait, Will, we are not going to go over the intro paragraph of every single Just article. Just this one, because okay, okay. I thought this was amazing. Okay, okay. There are literally thousands of series to watch, with genres True. running the gambit of from romance to comedy, sports mm -hmm. to sci-fi, and mm -hmm. everything in between. If you're curious about anime, maybe your friend told you to watch the latest Chainsaw Man episode, or you came across an anime edit on, on, on TikTok. Diving into the expansive world of anime can be a little overwhelming. Never fear. Here are some beginner tips for exploring anime. Number one, decide where to stream your anime. Very true. You're probably not interested in dishing out tons of money to watch anime, but, you know, while... Crunchyroll is the premier anime streaming service and has the widest collection of TV shows and films, your other subscriptions may actually be hiding some anime gems in your catalogs. Peacock, uh, Paramount, Netflix, HBO Max, and Hulu all have a vast array of anime to select from. Odds are, it won't be hard to find something that piques your interest. I mean, very, very obvious, yeah, for sure. I think especially for a lot of people, Amazon Prime has a lot to offer see, already. See, what I liked, Netflix about, is, what I liked yeah. about that first point, though, was that Unlike a lot of um, guides into watching anime, mm -hmm. they don't suggest which anime to watch first. Yeah, they don't say like, "Oh, what genre do you like?" The more, more like the more practical sense. What services do you have to access anime? Because it's a because money and like uh, it's a it's, it's a resource that is finite and it is a barrier to entry. Yeah, the next one they have number two, check out the classics. If you want to start out without having to do too much work, jump right into Naruto, a classic anime series from the 2000s. If you want a series you can binge from start to finish, check out Full Metal Alchemist. If you want something that's a bit more recently made and with an explosive fan base, check out My Hero Academia. I'm already in disagreement. That's not how I would do it. Or at least how I would advise people. Yeah, so it, it seems, and you'll you'll start seeing, you start noticing a pattern with a lot of these guides, which is check out the big hits immediately. Check out your My Hero Academias, your Demon Slayers, your Chainsaw Man. No, that's your okay. Naruto's, and all not that. that part. That's so, my opinion because I think, especially with Naruto or like Bleach prior to Thousand Year Blood War, for example, or One Piece, right? They are considered classics. Fuma Alchemist Brotherhood, classic, right? Guaranteed, hundred percent. I'm on. I'm on on your side in this argument. Who are a hypothetical person? However, it's like it's a big endeavor. All these shonen actions to 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 like bestow upon a a, a fledgling anime, especially things fan. Like, like Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, because there's so much to watch, and everyone is so opinionated in in general with entertainment that like. But, but what about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which? 
realistically is short in comparison with 60 odd episodes. I would not even go down that route either because second best rated of all time on the anime is. list. Yeah, but I would also argue top there, five most popular of all time on my There anime are list. flares of anime that as a newcomer, we also have to understand that you need to ease into it in my opinion. So for example, generally how I would do it is something that's set in modern time. For example, Haikyuu, if you like sports, is a very easy So you sell. would recommend Haikyuu over Slam Dunk in this instance? A hundo percent. I would not even recommend Slam Dunk, period. At least not in the beginning, for sure. But then if you like basketball, it's like, you're not going to tell someone to watch Ayawashi first in terms of soccer. Good no point. way. Yeah, I would probably recommend people watch Blue Lock over Ayawashi first. Yeah. Even though I think one is popcorn and or, the other one is a realistic not, not take. Even blue, just watch Haikyuu. Yeah. Because <laughs> Haikyuu is readily available. It's super hype. It's well executed for Movies the most part. Movies are still coming out. Exactly. And technically, if you really want to, the manga is finished, so you can binge that too. Because I think personally... Do you think do you think the discourse factor also plays into this? Like the fact that people have already watched Naruto or One Piece. But it's the a fact product that, like, of its but, time. But it's like if you start with some of the newer stuff, at least there's people around in your circle that you may be able to talk yeah. to. I think the main uh, thing that I would focus on to get someone into anime is reducing your barrier to entry for whatever reason, superficial or not. So for example, as you, as, as they accurately pointed out, your Avenue, you don't need to go get Crunchyroll. It's already on Netflix. It's already on Disney Plus. It's already on Hulu. It's already on, unless if you have no streaming platforms, then that's different, right? But chances are you either have a subscription to one of these services. There's at least one anime on there. Yeah. Or an anime adjacent, right? Then the second thing is the popular stuff, I would agree, but not popular to a point, not the classics. Just so that you can get in the discussion, get into what is relevant nowadays so then you can talk to more people and then that will eventually you might get into a community then you will get more into it and then you can do the slam dunks and then you can do uh actually before that you probably want to do the full alchemist before the slam dunks i would say slam dunks is a bit more higher tier in my opinion yeah it, in terms it, of it, like <clears throat> i would recommend that later even though i would say slam dunk is really good no it's 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 essentially like um Full Metal Alchemist is a, a very nice wine, a full-bodied wine, whereas Slam Dunk is a well-aged whiskey. One definitely takes a little bit more of an acquired taste to be able to fully appreciate, and that's why I think Slam Dunk is. Uh, now the next one, number three. Don't be afraid to explore new series. If the classics don't do it for you, or maybe you've already watched Naruto and My Hero Academia, there's still no shortage of series to explore. Anime tends to be very genre-specific. Do you want classroom romances that include a bunch of teens going to a beach? Do you want a show about a sports team? Are you looking for something a bit more fantastical? Maybe something more upbeat and mellow? Or depressing but full of animation style? There's something for everyone in the world of anime. You just have to know how to choose. I would also emphasize, at least in the beginning, right? As in like someone who is trying to freshly get into anime, right? So if I get this correctly, Will this hypothetical person that wants to get into anime, they are invested in trying to check the format out, right? The yeah. medium out, right? So they are, they're willing to at least go the extra mile to a certain extent, right? There is a second part to it, which is, if you aren't sure where to start, ask yourself what kind of TV shows you usually watch and pick an anime genre that feels relatively similar. If you just caught up on The Last of Us on HBO Max, maybe opt for a show like Attack on Titan. If you love a good comedy like Abbott Elementary, look at Spy Family or Romance Killer. Maybe you love Peace and Quiet. That would make Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli films a perfect fit. Uh... I would say movies so, so and like, anime is different. In terms of like, yeah, having that genre comparison between a live action and an anime. Or mm. like a or like a Western show with a Japanese animation. I, I, I don't like that. Uh, it's hard. It's it's it because you can't say that like a romance drama in like okay. Historical dramas, mm -hmm. right? In Western TV is not the same as historical dramas in Japanese or Asian in general. Yeah, and I would also argue on top of that, movies and TV series of anime format, I consider it separate. 
like to are a certain you, are extent. Are you going to con- are you going to compare things like The Crown to Apothecary Diaries, both of which are you, fantastic, or both are historical could, dramas? I guess you could, but you you'd be grasping at straw to be able to sort of make a comparison point between, even though they both are historical dramas. What I would say also is, when you are fresh off the boat, right, as uh, in terms of being your exposure to anime, do not feel guilty in dropping a series, even if it's a really good one, because the motivation is to keep you going and being invested such that there's a very high likelihood that even if you don't vibe with Fuma Alchemist Brotherhood, you will actually do after you consume a bunch of other stuff. But if you force yourself to watch it and appreciate it in quotes, when you don't have the capacity to, you should like, you know what I mean? Like the longevity of your passion for anime should stem from you first. Then you can go back and finish Steins Gate. Then you can go back and finish Full Mel Alka's Brother. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, no wonder it's really good. Because a lot of people have said so. So it's already, it, you know that it's going to be good. Yeah. But when you discover it in terms of knowing it versus when other people tell you to like it, it's very different. Well, that brings on to the fourth point. Ask your friends for anime recommendations. Mm, we get that a lot, by the way. If you feel stumped about where to start or which anime to start next, don't be afraid to ask friends for their recommendations. Anime fans can be pretty passionate about the shows they are watching. Can be. You, and you might just start watching up after listening to them rave about the latest episode. This one, I feel, is a bit of um, a, a moot point where it's like, if you're trying to get into anime and you want to discover stuff, like asking friends for recommendations is like a whole different rabbit hole. Yeah. Because you run into people that will be like, oh, you, I, I, I fucking love Seinen, so I'm going to recommend all these for you. I really am into like romance comedy, so I'm, you definitely check out like Spy Family or Love is War and all that. I think a friend's opinion, especially one that you trust in terms of, Knowing more about anime, and okay, again, we're we're excluding manga in this case, right? So, it is relying on other people's input is important to a certain extent, but if if your ultimate goal is to appreciate and fall into this rabbit hole of anime, it has to stem from you. You know what I mean? Like it sounds like existentialism, but like if you don't like it, you don't force it. Number five. Explore anime from past, present, and future. With such a what? long history in Japan, anime produced in different decades can have a unique style and aesthetic that is worth looking into. Check out Doraemon and Galaxy Express 999, both amazing series made in the 70s. My Neighbor Totoro and mm-hmm. Saint Seiya Knights of the, Z- of the Zodiac perfectly capture the gritty yet soft style typical in 80s anime. Okay, okay, first off, how do you do a future anime? This is not like... Paradox, Ghost Rider, parad- Time Paradox. I th- I think it was just so that they can do the trio of past, present, future. Oh, I think f- what they really mean is just stuff from the past and stuff that's contemporary. Right. Yeah, but I mean that's not bad advice either. In the in the sense that like you don't just have to watch all the new stuff. Like you should also be able to find some appreciation for the classics. I mean, like if that's the case, then they would, if you only recommend new stuff, then no one's ever going to watch Cup of Bebop. Yeah. You know, like no one's ever going to check out Chat. I think that's okay. You think so? I feel like if you wanted to fully explore anime, though, it would be really remiss to just skip over Bebop because it's old. Correct. But I also feel like that's okay, too. Explain. As in, if I think you will, someone will lose out if they don't check out Cowboy Bebop at some point if you are really into anime. But it is not compulsory. You know what I mean? Mm. As in, like, if you were to watch Cowboy Bebop, it, I'm fully confident that almost 10 out of 10 people that watch Cowboy Bebop will really like Cowboy Bebop or at least appreciate it. But I will not ever say to people, this is a must-watch anime that will apply to you. I guess in a sense, it would be the similar where it's like, I would recommend people watch things like Everything Everywhere All at Once, but I might not recommend someone watch Memento. Just because, like, as much as a great movie Memento is, it's not like I, I, I personally don't like watch all the old classic stuff myself. But at the same time, I feel like there's, I mean, like, it, it's not to say that you should, it, like, it, it's bad to recommend past stuff. Like, there, there's credence to it too. I no, think, no, for I, sure. I, I think it's like it's, it's not necessarily like a must do. But 
this is assuming that you've already gone through like the classics, you've already got the French recommendations. Then that's different. Then that's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I would also argue past a certain year, from a technological standpoint, the four by three ratio is gonna be off putting to people. Uh, the H D remaster I, I, is gonna be off putting to people. And I'm look, I'm not saying that like it should be that way. I'm just saying any barrier to entry for a newcomer is a barrier that is legitimate to them. Yeah, but it, but that, but but by that then you'd be missing out on things like Akira. Yes, you'd be missing out on the. On I mean, the to be aforementioned, uh, Cowboy Bebop. I mean, to be fair to everyone, including yourself, didn't it, you watch it, Akira but, very recently? Yeah, but even that, from that point, then that means that all Ghibli movies are moot. No, it just means that when you're ready for it, or you don't have to feel compelled. Like you're forced, or like if you don't like it. Again, this is not forcing somebody to watch past stuff, though. This is just more like, hey, like don't be afraid to look into some stuff that is older or you know not of the same aspect ratio of today's world. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But I also feel like there should be a caveat that says you should not also be afraid to drop it or feel like it's yeah, all right. I, I mean, you've already mentioned it too, right? Just because something is good doesn't mean that you should feel shame if you drop it either. I think Especially that, in the beginning. It, yeah, this is not the, to say that like you have to absolutely love and watch everything. It's more just like there. these are ways to explore anime, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So but, I, I Then think, I would agree for I think, sure. I think that's a good point. It's not to say that like Bebop is a must-watch. I would agree with you that it's not. But it would definitely be something that is on your watch list once you've started building up your watch list of anime and you've completed what you feel comfortable watching. Mm-hmm. Because at that point, you're all in on the on the medium. Then at that point, it doesn't matter whether it is uh, Space Cowboys or whether it is post-apocalyptic Akira, cyberpunk, Ghost in the Shell. It's just going to be good anime. I, I like this uh, next point. Uh, don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone. And the accompanying image of it is a still frame from Ancient Magus's Bride. Very beautiful. Yo. When you dive into the world of anime, it's important to approach with a curious attitude and open mind. Anime narrative style can be very different from what you're used to, especially if you've grown up watching Hollywood films. When we- where Western narratives tend to be linear with clear good guys and bad guys, Japanese anime storytelling can be slur-paced and convoluted. There are antagonists you will find yourself rooting for and protagonists that tend towards villainous attitudes. This can be aggravating to new viewers. Remember, there is a learning curve. If you fully embrace it, you'll find yourself loving this new narrative style before long. Expect yourself to be challenged by the storytelling, but the rewards are well worth it. I don't think a lot of anime is that ambiguous. No, uh, I, 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 I would agree. in the shonen action part. I think it's also like Western narratives are also not that clear and linear exactly either, right you've I definitely think, you've definitely got anti-heroes and you've also got pseudo villains in in western narratives in too. fact i would say uh you know when we had our discussion with vichelle right with with his wife not being into anime it's just the tropes and the archetypes does not jive with her so it's already a lost cause in terms of her being an appreciation like appreciating the anime genre it's not like she didn't try or that it's like if you're not into yeah, it's, I, 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 I disagree that it is like a narrative style that's different. I think that that's kind of just it, it's not a good point to make because everything is it, different. I think it's 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 the cultural perception of right. it. That's what we were talking about. Where like if, if you weren't accustomed to it in the first place, it doesn't mean that once you start watching anime, you're immediately like, oh, sugoi, ah, ah, mm-hmm, ah, mm-hmm. ah, subarashi. No, you're not going to all of a sudden become a weeb, right? You're, there's going to be growing pains along the way. Yeah, and forging your own anime tastes and identity, for sure. Now, the last point, which is I think is the most important, have fun with it. Anime is an entire new world to explore with no shortage of stories. With so much to discover and a wildly passionate fan base to immerse yourself in, anime has something for everyone. And who knows, you might find yourself with a new show to watch and also maybe a Crunchyroll subscription. Now, Will, this is the one where I am the most envious of. Because imagine watching everything again for the first time. It is going to be such an awesome experience. Uh, what would you give to watch Gurren Lagann all over again? 
that one will be different because of my personal circumstances attached to it at the fair, time. Fair, fair, fair. Contextual, yes. But I would argue there are a lot of shows that we both watch that if we could, watching it again and again and again for the first do you time. Know what, do you know what I would do? And this is actually something that came up. I was watching this YouTuber called Jimmy Kim. Uh, he was he, uh, he was exploring food in, in, in Osaka. And the guest that he had all the uh, Japanese native and he asked the question oh uh, you really like anime because he likes anime too it's like oh yeah, yeah I do what's your favorite anime Kara no Kyokai The Garden of Sinners yeah okay what I would do to relive that experience all over again yeah. watching the Spiral fifth movie yeah, holy Spiral fuck. Paradox oh, oh my god. god it's like fucking mind boggling okay so that was the final point Okay, so we had things like decide where you stream, check out classics, don't be afraid to explore new series, ask friends for recommendations, explore anime from the past and present, don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone, and have fun with it. Yeah, and I think the have fun with it, obviously, ending it on that note is the most appropriate and the most positive, but it's also very indicative of if you're not having fun watching it on Netflix, then don't. If you're not having fun checking out the classics because That's everyone true, yeah. told you so, then don't. Because... If you're not having fun, you are only doing yourself a disservice because you are not enjoying anime as the way that you, you probably should curate for yourself. Exactly. Right? So as a whole, this guide, right, from Movie Web, like three out of five. Three out of five? Yeah. So six out of t- well, six out of yeah. That that's I give a- it a seven out of ten using Mal scale. Yeah, let's do a Mal scale. A Mal scale, a, seven yeah. out of ten. So. It's fine. Good enough, right? Pass. It, 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 some good points. Some of them you're like, ah, it depends. It really is contextual, like the past and present one, yeah. asking friends, recommendations. But overall, it's a it's a pretty good guy because it's not straight away telling you, watch this anime. If you like this genre, check this out. Yeah, da, da, and da, it's da. really tough because everyone is different. So to have a, essentially what, like six, seven bullet points that will apply to literally everyone under the sun is impossible. So you got to give all of these articles like a pass to a certain extent in terms of being able to catch the widest net. Okay, so number two, let's the go. The next one, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little bit phlegmy today. So this next one is a Medium article. You're familiar with Medium, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is written uh, by the Anime Club at Ashoka University, which I believe is a university in uh, in India. Uh, Dope. Double, double check. Yes, it's a private university in India. Anime 101, a beginner's guide to anime. All right. Uh, so again, explaining what anime is talking mm-hmm. about how to get into it mm-hmm. uh this person they started off <laughs> the line i think uh is actually pretty uh is as uh, someone who started off uh anime with series like death note and assassination classroom my benchmark was definitely high and i and it did struggle to find uh things that i would enjoy um immediately uh Bro, there's definitely better anime than Assassin's Classroom and Death Note to start off with, but hey, you do you. But they're still both good shows, though. Yeah, still good shows, but they say that like, the bar is super high. It's like you haven't explored everything. But I guess as an ex- as someone who started off with anime, fair, right? Look, also to be fair, when let's say you finish your first anime, that's the only bar that you have. So, of course, it is high or low. It's like your first and last. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So what this person did was rather than sort of guiding people how to get into anime what they did was they broke down anime genres mm. more by like targeted demographics mm-hmm. so not like the genre tags you should right. get like shonen seinen exactly so they what they do for example is like number one uh konomamuke which is you know age rating uh aimed towards children between the ages of three and ten um but sometimes well received by older audience audiences that's like your doraemon type deal yeah so Typical elements, kid-friendly, cute, fantastical character designs, simplistic plots, usually giving moral lessons, yada, yada, yada. Recommendations for this particular demographic would be very straightforward. Pokemon, Blade Blade, My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service. So a mixture of children's shows as well as Ghibli movies. Mm -hmm. Number two, Shonen. Don't need to explain that one. Things they recommend in this category would be Assassin's Classroom, obviously, because that's one of the first they've watched, Haikyuu, Death Note, and Disastrous Life of Psyche K. And within each one, each, within each um, 
anime recommendation, they also give like the genre tags for it too. Mm-hmm. So like, a session in classroom would be action, supernatural, comedy, school. Psyche K is comedy, supernatural, slice of life, death note, psychological, supernatural, crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number three, shoujo. Similar, don't need to explain. Uh, recommendations for beginners, My Little Monster, From Me to You, Sailor Moon, Banana Fish, Yona of the Dawn. Number four, Seinen. Recommended ones, Steins Gate, Black Lagoon, Vinland Saga, March Comes in Like a Lion, Death Parade. Okay, Will, um, let me ask you a question first. Is the rest of the article is, is in a similar format, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. There's they, the, the last one is uh, Jose. Okay. So I'm just going to give you my opinion right off the bat in terms of a guide. Mm-hmm. 5.5 5 out of 10. I give it less. I would have four. And the reason why is because the way that they do it is by I think pertaining... We're, I, yeah, I think we're thinking along the same yeah, lines. They're pertaining yeah. it to age demographics, which, let's be real, right? It's such a fine... Like, it's such a small scale where, like, Koromonuke, uh, Koromonuke, which is 3 to 10. But then you also have Shoujo, and you also have Seinen, no. and, 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 and... The, the issue is you're not like, guiding the person. You're You're simply listing out a bunch of shows that are good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And as like, they, you know, they're, they're uh, suggesting like, oh, these certain demographic genres are targeted towards a certain age group of a certain gender. You lost a plot already. At, at that, that point, point, it's also like, well, OK, so Jose targeted towards young women over the age of 18. But like Watsakoi, Uromachi, U- Uramichi Onisan, Princess Jellyfish, yeah, yeah. Kaguya-sama. It's like, bro, like I fucking love half of these. So yeah, you know? they have to understand that as a newcomer, right? Nah, nah, as you well, don't yeah. know any of these shonen shoujo. Like, what the fuck is all this? It's like, stop putting lingo in it. Just yeah. get them to watch or like guide them so then that, they the discover the love. That's the thing, too, as well. They, they, they straight go hot and heavy with the terminology. And that's something with that, no like, context. That, that, that's helpful, but like you said, you kind of explain what the fuck Shonen, Seinen, Jose, and all this shit is to me. And, and, and to be like, honest... Why why is Black Lagoon a Seinen? Why is Yona of the Dawn a, so, a shoujo? For us, that classification, that demographic terminology is very important. For a newcomer, it's irrelevant. Mm-hmm. That's the issue. The issue is to get to that minutia of like differentiating between shoujo, shonen, seinen. At that point, I would have already considered you in with the industry such that these are now the things that you either need to learn or pick up or categorize, which is already past the point of your first exposure or your your way into anime, in my opinion. So immediately, we've had two um, two guides. Movie Web being a pretty decent one at a seven out of ten. I would agree with you on that one. And then uh, the one from uh, Ashoka University's anime fan club, anime club, four out of ten. I, I think five out of ten is a bit too much for it, just because like it doesn't actually guide me into anything. It just tells me what things are. That's it. It tells me what a shonen is. Cool. Why should I get into shonen? It tells you what a Jose is, okay, but like, I'm not, a, I'm not a young woman at the age of over eighteen. Do you know what this you know? article reminds me of? It's like a textbook that yeah. gives you yeah. good information, and the recommendations that they give of each demographic is good. And then afterwards, okay, now go do what sure. you want with it. But do it, what you want with it. But this yeah. book is in a library on a, it's on a shelf in a library somewhere, and you're not telling me which library, which shelf to go find it. That's essentially how I feel when you, as a newcomer, you you give me that article. That's you, how useful you, you it is to me. You read that book. It's like, okay, if you like this, read this chapter. Okay, cool. And then you have to go find another book. And then you find another book. And it's like, it, it doesn't, it's not beginner friendly. I understand the intention of trying to break down the demographics. And, and that sh- is important down the line, for but sure. It, but it's not, exactly. It's not important for me to know right from the beginning. A lot of people that I think that we know that like anime probably don't even know what shoujo is or yeah, seinen. That, they the might thing. know shonen action, that, that, but that's the, the only too. thing. I think like if you were to determine what your type of anime taste would be based on what demographics it goes for, you are in for a world of hell because there are some joseis and shoujos that are way better for shonen than shonen and things to get started and with, I, and vice versa. And I would argue right? you could regardless be... The, of what gen, regardless of what gender you are or and, age. And I would argue you could be the most hardcore and hardcore of anime fandom and don't give a shit about shoujo or jose. 
So why bother? Unless if that's what you want. But how would you know that's what you want until it's, you... It's, it's been defined by you that this is what it is. And therefore, if you don't like it, then you will never check it out. Which is a big miss, I think. In my yeah. Opinion. Moving on. This one is from the, uh, the India Times. Times Entertainment. Man, so we're, we're kind of dunking on India again. They just happen to be the top three searches. Fair. For me, okay. Right? Blame Google. Straight... Sh- I mean, straight away, this one kind of loses it for me because it was immediately the standard 10 must-watch series to dive into the world of anime. Immediately, like, you're limiting yourself to 10. That's already, like, a pretty small basket to work with, right? But it's the shows that I'm a bit, like, uh, Let's hear it. So, just to sort of preamble it, right? Whether you're drawn to action-packed adventures, spine-chilling thrillers, or heartwarming tales, these shows offer a gateway into the mesmerizing world of anime. A quick question. Is it in bullet point or is it ranked? I they they, they number them. Okay, but, but I don't know. But don't it's know, not a hierarchy. I don't right? know if it means there's a hierarchy. Oh, okay. Or not. I'm it's assuming just, yeah. it's not then at this point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Okay. They, they 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 then tell you where it's available to watch. So fair. That's Crunchy good. Roll and Funimation, but this is obviously uh, pre merger. Well, actually, this actually came out in 2023 November. So <laughs> interestingly, they still left. They haven't updated the article. I guess not. Uh, Death Note. Okay. Bob Psycho 100. Mm-hmm. Pokemon. Okay. Naruto. Demon Slayer. Spy Family. Hunter Hunter. One Punch Man. Dragon Ball. And it's become very oh. abundantly oh, clear. Oh, okay. Um, very abundantly clear. By the way, clear. guys, um, there is uh, Shonen uh, Weekly Jump, right? Um, so that's all of anime, guys. I just wanted to let you guys know. Just, There's just, no such thing. Just watch the the latest and greatest, the most classic shows of all time. Of one particular publisher. That's it. Which is, no. I was it, three but, out of ten. Yeah, this is one where like I'm really, really not down with because it just lists the popular shit. And it's, no, no, but there's nothing wrong with that. No, but no. they're all also weekly shown in Jump, by but the way. You, but you can't preamble this by saying if you want ch- spine chilling thrillers action back adventures heartwarming tales uh, or, or whatsoever because none of those shows offer the full gamut of what you just said there's zero spectrum yeah right? in fact it, if anything it's it's cornered like what differentiates Jujutsu Kaisen from Demon Slayer from Naruto from Hunter Hunter from Dragon Ball right like, we can have that discussion we can tell but a newcomer no, like, they're not going to know. A newcomer is going to be watching. Like these are just superheroes beating each other up with superpowers and whatnot. I don't see what the difference is. That that's where like I have a problem with this. It doesn't seem like it's a very well thought out article. It's just seeing what the most popular things are, posting it, and then trying to fandangle it so it seems like it's more all encompassing. Three out of ten. Three out of ten. Uh. I'm sorry, India, but it also <laughs> happened to be the next one. Uh, Hindustan Times. Man, if, is this gonna, is this an indirect like dunk? Is that what you're no, trying to get me to do? No, but the, I mean, th- this one this one is a bit akin to the uh, the, the first one, the, the movie web, right? Right. So, uh, start with a popular anime. Good, good. Discover your favorite genre. Good. Start watching dubbed or subbed versions. And then figuring out which one you like more. Absolutely. Right? So the itchy say as well, it's recommended to start with the dubbed version of the series and then progress to the subbed version. However, for a more immersive experience, we recommend you dive straight into the subbed version. This way, not only will you fully appreciate the original voice acting and sound effects, but you will also have the opportunity to pick up some Japanese phrases and expand your language skills. Yeah, I think that's an extremely good point in terms of like the dub and sub debate because also on top of all that, right, you're eliminating the barrier to entry in terms of people appreciating sub off the bat because not everyone would. Also, you're exposing someone to the idea of dub because there is a chance if you are un- like unfamiliar with anime that you think everything is spoken in Japanese with subtitles. Or people just don't want to read whilst watching. Right. Right. But then you didn't know that there is actually a dub of like Hindi of this anime or, you know, a dub of English or a dub of, you know, Chinese of this anime. I mean, right. Crunchyroll is doing the best they can by expanding as many languages or Netflix. Their... Right. Yeah. So so it because I would argue there is a high chance that someone who's unfamiliar with anime would just think uh, Japanese dub English or 
your local language like, self. Bro, if you and I both understood Japanese, our experience of watching anime would be totally different from what we have right now where we have to watch it with subs, right? Uh, that's just a fact. I'm also used to watching subs because I watch a lot of like foreign movies and stuff. So I'm, and I think nowadays a lot of people watch like K-pop, K-drama. To be fair, you did have that issue when you were talking about- Link Click? Uh, yeah, and yeah. watching it in Chinese, right? But that's like a weird exception that is like the opposite side of that coin, you're, right? You're just too accustomed to reading subs and watching in Japanese that when you actually are hit with the language of familiarity in it's Chinese- It's really <laughs> weird. Yeah, right? Yeah. The next one, uh, similar thing. Choose a streaming service. Join an online community. Ooh. Yeah. I, okay, no. Here's what I would say. Not join, lurk. Yeah. You don't have to be, you don't have to contribute from day one. Uh, but yeah, essentially, you watch anime and you like them now. So what do you do? You can join an online community, you share your thoughts, read conspiracy theories. Don't do that. Ask for anime recommendations and share your love for anime with other fans. You can also attend events like Comic Cons and anime fan meet and greets mm. in the future. I mean, in the future, yes. I also think that people should. Uh, listen to podcasts because we're obviously Will and I are biased. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very important one. Yeah, but but also it's like easy to download it because it's free for mo almost most people. There are plenty to choose from, and probably in your local language of choice. Yeah, it just gets started either way, right? I, I would give this one a seven out of ten as well, just because it, it it's similar, but it also does the one added benefit of telling people doesn't matter whether it's sub or dub, just choose whichever one you're more comfortable with. I would say, even though it's seven out of ten, I would put it behind our, the first one that we talked about. Yeah, I think about. this one is a bit more like bare bones, straightforward. Whereas the, the I do like the one. sub dub one though. Like yeah. that, that point is uh, something that generally people don't consider. Yeah, I'm not even going to go into the Reddit ones because those flowcharts are fucking insane. It's there's legitimately, a lot. it's like, do you want to watch anime? Yes, and then there's 50 million choices to yeah. go down. And then if you say no, it just says repeat question one. Yeah. Or it's just like, oh, here's another table for you to look at. Then <laughs> and it's just even more shit. So I'm not gonna go into the Reddit ones, but Reddit Reddit is obviously a useful source for people who want to get started. The problem is, a lot of the stuff on there is not beginner friendly. It's because too overwhelming, man. And most people who are already on subreddits for anime or whatever community are already dedicated. Exactly. So yeah. you you can't just come in as like a newcomer and expect to be able to learn things like 101 style. Mm -hmm. No, you you legitimately have to spend time curating your search within Reddit to find what you're looking for. And you might not be able to find oh, it either. And by the way, I'm going to throw shade at the, the, the previous article that we just talked about that we just wrapped up. Do not join in on a community because the issue when it comes to a lot of different uh, entertainment mediums is the moment you open your mouth, especially when you're not ready for the repercussions or you're not well equipped, you are going to get lambasted by someone somewhere in some country, whether it is your fault or not. And that will probably give you an off-putting feeling towards the medium, despite it not being anyone's fault. Now we're going to leave India and go to okay. Japan. We're going to be talking about Tokyo Weekender. Okay. A quick beginner's guide to anime from classic series to what's trending. Uh, so this one actually, I actually don't know if it's uh, from Japan. Uh, it's just called uh, Tokyo Weekender. But a lot of the stuff is like, oh, the happenings in Hokkaido, Tohoku, Chukoku, and all that. So okay. it seems pretty Japanese to me. Um, so this one kind of breaks it down from classics to contemporary to like more sort of like millennial stuff. They literally have the classics, the millennials, and what's trending. So in the classics... They deem these as series that are non-negotiable if you're interested in understanding some of the medium's origins and titles that still have loyal fans. Get the fandoms. fuck out. Get the fuck out. That's already a no-go zone for me. <laughs> I think I think at that point, like when it says, "Oh, this is non-negotiable," you're already making it an assumption. It's no, no. It, you're setting up a barrier. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's why I think it's a no-go zone. Not because they are wrong. Because I haven't heard even the, the, the stuff that they talk but about. But it's like, what if I don't like these? Well, then am I not an anime fan? You no, know? and there's something wrong with you. So the ones they have, they actually don't have that many selections under each one. Uh, but the three they have is Dragon Ball. For non-negotiable? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hajime no Ippo. Oh, I, oh, I'm not an anime fan anymore. Cardcaptor uh, Sakura. Uh, okay. 
But it's like those are three pretty weird choices for okay. Aside from Dragon Ball, I wouldn't is completely understandable. I think Car Captain Sakura is great, but also it's like, like, uh, is it is it the most classic non negotiable? Is it the most non negotiable of classics? Right. I would argue Car Captain Sakura should not be placed ahead of Sailor Moon. This but this article so far seems to be a bit more personal than anything, right? Elitist, even I would argue. Millennials, stemming from the golden age of anime in the late 1990s and early 2000s, these are some of the most pop- explosively popular anime. And guess what they are? The Naruto, big three? Naruto, One Piece, and Vampire Knight. What? If you're a fan of a novel series like Twilight, Vampire Knight could be your guilty anime pleasure. This is where it really solidifies that this is more a personal article than actually giving recommendations. Because who in their right fucking mind would say that Vampire Knight is a representation of the millennial anime. Oh my god, this looks like Code Geass slash Fruits Basket. Yeah. Vampire Knight. I mean, I mean, the fact that they preface this by saying, if you're a fan of Twilight, then what you said just now is a pretty apt description of it. So far, I'm not buying any of this. This is getting closer and closer to being a 1 out of 10. Uh, okay, there's some legitimacy to some of the choices, but it's like... You, who else would have like not put anything in there, right? To me, it's not a guide. What's hot? Currently trending anime to watch so you too can hop on the hype train. JJK, Chainsaw Man, Oshinoko. Hmm. This article sucks. Like, okay, some of them are pretty straightforward, no-brainer choices, but it, this doesn't help me in terms of figuring out if this is the starting point for anime, like if if I had to start watching anime with these nine choices of Hachino, Hachime no Ippo, Vampire Knight, Karkat de Sapura, Oshino Ko, Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man, Man, One Piece, people would look at me like, yeah, this is just like that other article where you just list out the top 10 most popular things. The most least effort given type of list. Yeah. A type of, it's not a guide, period. It's just not a guide. That's what I would say. It's this, not a this, guide. This reads out as these are nine series that you like watching whoever wrote this article and and, and to be honest like the elitist of like a non-negotiable thing to me is so dumb to say that like like who gives you the right in a way right so i would put this the l- bottom two i give it a two so far it's not it's not absolutely garbage but it does not like you said work as a i think i think even a zero out of ten would be pretty apt because it's not a guide yeah that's what i mean it's yeah. the lowest of the of the ones i've read i've heard so far from you yeah this next one is uh from a geek girl's guide so rather than it being a sort of like list of animes to watch or like a way to get started in it what they do is they actually ask staff members or other sort of like colleagues from different uh websites to give suggestions on certain things so okay for example one person from geek native said my tip is don't give up too quickly anime series can be uh, anime episodes can be very short around 25 minutes each and it's not unusual for it to take two or three episodes for a series to settle down to put it a different way episode one can be very different in tone from the rest of the series my newbie recommendation is the series Log Horizon. It's mm. a now common scenario. Gamers working, uh, waking up in a world, uh, in the game world, and therefore is mostly fantasy, but with some, more, some familiar elements. So this person does also subscribe to the three episode rule. Give it time to cook, right? Mm-hmm. The next one is, this one's a long one, uh, a geeky gal, but it's like kind of basing it off of genre recommendations. So like if you like rom-coms, my love story could be a good choice for you. Ro- romance and a good cry plastic memories you love action ghost in the shell thrillers death note if you love food food wars gamers start out online if you like the mcu or dc comics one punch man like the, the straight away like if you like something in a western format you might like a similar format in anime a similar genre in anime it's a look yeah, when people make that comparison, right? Obviously, even within this uh, BP, it's not the first time the association of this equals something like this in anime form. I don't blame you for having that as like your way to convince someone to go into anime. 
But on the other hand, it's also very reductive in every sense of the word because it is not one-to-one in many respects. For example, food war. How are you going to convince someone of the etchy nature when you are literally watching food wars as like one of like the first five animes that you have watched in your lifetime? Yeah. Maybe you vibe with it, but the etchy part of it, even though I don't think is very egregious, it's something that is like very foreign to someone who is not acquainted with anime. Yeah. The next one is um, so it's not from like a website. It's just the person's name, uh, Michael Merlino, which I think actually is a, a pretty good one. So it's, is 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 this a different one already? No, these, these are all within the same. Right. Guide. So it's just they a collection interview of, yeah, different people. Different right. Ways of recommending this. Correct. Okay. So, what they say was I've always wanted to share interest in anime to friends, but repeatedly come up against this, this same wall. Anime can be fucking long. Shows like One Piece are some of my favorites, but convincing someone to sit down for 900 plus, uh, actually, it's a thousand plus episodes now and counting is a tall order. So, my advice is to find shorter anime series that are complete. There are many shows that tell the full story in 13 episodes or so, and they often are a good starting point. Then focus on themes and characters. Plot and anime isn't always the fastest, so it's important to look beyond it, particularly when you're just starting out. Oh, that's okay. It's, it's, it's decent advice. Mm. At least in terms of like knowing that it can be a marathon trying to complete some of the classics. Because like you said, right? Like One Piece, you know it's fantastic, but try and convince somebody to sit down and watch a thousand fucking episodes of One Piece. Right? I mean, I'm not. And I would say I'm very on the pulse with anime. I don't. Yeah. So the rest of this is just similar. Like just asking other people for their way of suggesting like, yo, oh, like maybe uh, – a beginner tip would be to have someone to watch anime with you. Very good idea. Yeah. Extremely my, good idea. Yeah. My introduction, this is from uh, from Michelle, at a girl's geek, a girl, a geek girl's guide. My introduction to anime was from having it screen shared between my friend and me because he was already a fan. I mean, we did that with Discord, right? We would watch it together this way. So he was my guide, essentially. This anime I was watching was Attack on Titan. Uh, you know, if you're sensitive to gore might be tough to watch but however i do recommend it because the story is very compelling so not so much like what anime they recommend but how they actually got started into watching and, anime. and and that is the important part right i think also one of the things that uh you've heard me time and again will talk about is i love fighting games a lot but i don't play it anymore even though i watch streams or online tournaments i mean evo just finished like a couple of weeks ago is because you literally don't have someone to play with locally and it's very different when you play it locally versus playing it online similarly when you watch an anime and then go on reddit go on you know forums to like share or see other people's opinions it's very different than when you and i will are on discord during covid and we watched a lot of dumb ass awesome anime yeah we wouldn't be able to find some of our favorites if it wasn't for that yeah and i think like cross and right yeah and again having someone there with you is almost like accountability. It's like going to the gym. If there's someone else, you feel like oh, I I don't want to let them down. Yeah, it's 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 definitely tr- like you know a, a good way to sort of break the perception of consuming entertainment media being like a solo endeavor. Like you really can actually, if you have the ability to or you have the opportunity to, watch it with other people. I mean, gotta watch them all. When we first conceived of that concept, is precisely because someone knows the series, the other person doesn't at all, and the other person's job is to guide the person who hasn't watched it through everything. Yeah. The next one I have is... So I would get... Uh, I would get oh, wait. So the, is the list finished yeah, for this one? So it's, yeah, a compilation of different people that they've interviewed and asked for different ways to suggest I would say things. it's still 7 out of 10, but there is a lot of misfires, especially in the middle. Like, the first person that they interviewed actually is, like, really good in terms of, like, the three-episode rule, get it going. The One Piece thing of, like... Oh, it's so long and different. I'm like, bro, like, they haven't even started flying yet. Just walk first. Yeah. So they no. So they say like, watch like shorter series and stuff, right? No, but even then, I would be like, don't say that either because you don't want to scare them right off the bat. Right? Or it's like, what happens? How many times have we talked about like, oh, this series only has a one season anime? If you want to know more, you're gonna to have to read manga. And for a lot of people, they're not willing to go down that route. Oh, no, but they did suggest, like, watching series that are short and complete. But how would you know that? 
that's the other. Well, I mean, like, or that, what about anime originals? Then it, you would it would be technically complete from beginning to end, so to speak. With that tip, there would be another layer of research. You would right. need to figure out, like, if you are going to watch the days complete, you, you would never. Which know is a to, barrier. Yeah, that's my issue. Yeah, look, but it might it, be a dumb barrier, but it's a barrier. But it's not the worst advice either. Though, no, it's not. Right? To, it's to, not. Find, to find something that is easily consumable in one season, that's a yeah, pretty good way to start. That's why it's with just, that one, there, I'm like... There are, there are caveats to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that's why for, for that specific advice, I was like a little bit iffy on because I see where you're going and I agree. But, but it doesn't always work. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously the last one, which is the first time like, it was have, mentioned have, of sharing a, it. Yeah, having right? a watch party. Yeah. I think is like paramount because when you hold other people accountable because someone else is there... It becomes like a routine. It becomes like a habit. You can have a straightforward discussion after the movie, after the anime. Or... It wouldn't be bad to have a guide watching with you as long as that guide's not overbearing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's also very dependent on the guide, so to speak. But even if it's like two newbies, so to speak, just sh- watching an anime. I mean, like, imagine you, like, recommending an anime. It's like, oh, I'll watch the thing with you. What do you want to recommend? Oh, let's watch Elf and Lead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this next one, which is from lifehacker.com, I'm not even going to talk about like what's in there because it's essentially just another regurgitating list of different series, things like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z and whatnot. But the one that I was pretty like iffed about uh, was the fact that the final one they recommended was not even an anime, but a whole fucking studio, Studio Ghibli. Like, just watch any movie from Studio Ghibli. And to my point here, I'm thinking, this person has never watched Grave of the Fireflies. <laughs> yeah, but that's... I understand, though, why yeah. you would say Studio Ghibli. It's just, you know... I, mean, I don't think that's bad it, advice. It, it, it's Totoro. It's Spirited Away. I don't think I that's get, bad advice, It's not though. bad advice. I think it's just... It was... One, it's super easy. And two, it's not like necessarily something that you can just say, oh, everything from under Studio Ghibli is going to be like suit- suitable for an anime beginner you know if I mean? I, but if i were to throw a dart at their invent like their, yeah, you, you their, their could, catalog you could end up with a totoro or a kiki's delivery kiki's delivery service or you could also end up with porcaroso or god forbid grave of the fireflies so it's not the worst thing i was just like you, you gotta give some caveats to just straight up recommending ghibli uh i'm not even gonna read this one because <laughs> the the website is called the point uh and it just lists three series Four series, sorry. Which is? <laughs> well, I mean, I just want to hear it. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, mm-hmm. Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion, mm-hmm. Cowboy Bebop, mm-hmm. Death Note. Okay. These are not introductory series into the world of anime. I'm sorry. Okay. They also then say, if you're looking for films, Your Name, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, and Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. You see, actually, those four, the I would argue in terms of films, right? Again, to me... Getting someone start. into anime yeah. films versus anime TV series is very different because one is serialized and one is like a one-off, right? Uh, I think those four are very good entry level. What I like about it is the fact that it's varied. You have fantasy. You have like you you, you have well, the fact that oh, wait, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is not Ghibli, right? It is. It is. So, so you have three Ghibli movies there, and then you have your name. So I think again, it's the whole. If you're talking about, about anime films. Sure. Of course, you're going to say Ghibli, but at least there's some variation within them all, right? I mean, I would but argue when... in terms of film, right? Like, we're just talking purely anime film. Ghibli would definitely be one of the first starting points for yeah, literally sure. anybody in terms of, like, a safe bet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, fair, 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 fair. But then, like, the four anime series of FMA Brotherhood, Code Geass, Cowboy Bebop, and Death Note. Wait, isn't with... the Code Geass one the movie, not the OG series? No, this is this is the OG series. Like, the movie the movie one, the, the Lelouch of the Rebellion is the original oh, okay. series. Yeah. Then that must have gotten it mixed up. There with, is with... a movie series. There is a yeah. movie trilogy of yeah. sorts. Yeah. But I forgot uh, the name But of it's, it. like, all four of those, maybe, like, Cowboy Bebop being an edge case, all three of those are a bit too similar. Wait, okay, so it says Death Note. Kogias, Kogias, Bebop, mm-hmm. Full Malcolmus Brotherhood. A, they're all roughly made within a certain era. Second of all, they're all, all four of them are really long, thrillers of sorts, except for Bebop. But all three of them are other uh, thrillers. Some of them action focused, and all that. It's it's too it's too narrow and focused. And I think it's list. too massive in terms of quantity. Yeah, you have sixty odd episodes of Co- of Brother uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. You have like forty episodes or so of Death Note. A lot for uh, Kokias. Bebop, funny enough, being the shortest one. But there. it's too Kerr, right? 
Yeah, Bebop is a, a double care. So it's it, it's already, in my opinion, like too much to ask for someone. Yeah, to watch like a, over like a hundred episodes of anime, and those being the four that you watch, I feel like you could easily spread them out and have like a single cur original. You can have a little romance in there. I think rather than being invested all in on a, a, a small number of series, you spread out the same episode count, but over a, vi- a wide variety of genres or demographics allows you to see the spectrum that anime offers. So then you would know what you like and don't like, and then thus you would know what to eliminate and what to include in your next watch through, essentially. Yeah. So those are all the guides that I came across. I eliminated a few more because I found that some of them are just copy and paste of the ones we've just read. And funny you didn't mention, like, Ranker or CBR. I was expecting something from Actually, them. Actually, funny enough, none of them had them on there. Maybe because they know better. They just have... Because their deal is top 10 lists or, like, spoiler content. So that's what right. it is, right? So, like, of the guides, so we've looked at roughly nine... I still think the first one is the best because it, it, guides, it actually actually. guides you and yeah. it, it, it teaches you... Almost like you can take that blueprint and apply it to literally anything, not yeah. necessarily anime. And the principles and the values are sound. You know what I mean? Yeah, it like, doesn't like tell you. It, it doesn't tell you that you have to watch this anime because it's a classic and it needs to be watched. I mean, do you like being told what to do? No, in no. general, you don't. It, as a beginner, you might at some in some form, but not like do this. It's more like, hey, there's this way to get started. What do you have? Yeah, uh, 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 available to you. Do you have Netflix? Okay. Look. Well, why don't we start looking through Netflix? Guide and see? Yeah. guiding someone is very different than ordering or demanding someone. Yeah, to, that's my that's to, my to, to just tell somebody here are, here here are the top ten animes for an anime beginner to watch. Like that that's okay. Uh, that's lazy. So, Will, uh, how long are we into the episode now? Okay. So now let me ask both of us now, if we were to create our own anime one hundred and one lift or extract from the ones that we just mentioned or completely fabricate one of our own on the spot right now, how would we or you go about it? Well, definitely talking about the um, the platform in which you consume your anime is important mm-hmm. because I think a lot of our friends here in Hong Kong yep. don't have Crunchyroll. Most Makes of them, sense. Most of them will have Netflix or at most Disney Plus along uh, with it. Spoiler alert, uh, the reason why Will and I use Crunchyroll a lot because we also use another service that is a three-letter acronym that is very useful to bypass regions yeah you know yeah vpns it's yeah. a very very popular network hey, nord nord <laughs> very, vpn very popular we, network we, we kind of nord we kind of uh if you want to talk to us uh we're open we're open man yeah we'll sell our soul for v- for, for nord vpn okay but but yeah i mean minus that combo right it's uh it's just what you got on hand for sure because yeah. that lowers the barrier to entry now, once you've let's say for example you only got Netflix, right? Don't worry about but Netflix itself already got a lot, Perfectly right? Perfectly fine. Yep. Now, would you go about telling people not telling people, but suggesting to people to look at anime based on your genre likes? So if you like action adventure, you like fantasy or romance or dramas or mysteries and stuff like that. Because you know we had that whole discussion about genre tags, right, and mm-hmm. how much of a clusterfuck it can be. Yeah. So would 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 that be part of like a guide to a beginner looking into anime? I would say yes, but only to f- start by finding your maybe your first or your second anime. Yeah. Not because you're discounting the rest of the catalog, but to just quickly get you to the front of the line so that you're watching anime right away. Yeah. It's a, it's basically like the the taster right yeah. there. Like, if you don't like Golden Time. Even though a lot of people like it, like Will, the moment you don't like it, don't feel guilty. Drop it. And then being like, maybe Shoujo is not dead to me, but Golden Time doesn't work for me right now, possibly. So I'll either revisit the genre or revisit Golden Time later. Let's, f- But we eliminated it for the time being. Let's focus on Haikyuu. Oh, I don't quite like this. Okay, then let's focus on Ghost in the Shell. You know what I mean? Like, It's not to saying that those are like forbidden. It's just to get someone down to watching something that they like and then they get motivated or convinced to say, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? And then you can even revisit, you know, uh, the series that you abandoned, so to speak. Yeah. So let's say now you've sorted out your platform of choice or like your platform of availability. Yeah. You've sorted down uh, the, the genres you want to check out. 
this is more personal for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it applies to you, but the way you consume media is also very important in terms of, are you someone that likes to watch week to week? Are you someone that likes to binge? Are you someone that maybe actually is super busy and can only afford to watch anime once or twice a week or maybe like one hour at a time? I would <laughs> alter what you're trying to say and ask whoever hypothetical person, are you afraid of FOMO? And if you are not, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, not not so much in terms of like contemporary stuff like stuff that's airing right now, but it's more like because there are certain series that are better watched in one go as opposed to some that you can just take one episode at a time. Right, because you either forget the plot or the characters or there's inter yeah, like interlaced, if, right? If, if there's like a super action-packed thriller, it's probably good to watch it all in one go. If it's a mystery, hey, you might want to, you know, suspend the mystery and just wait to be shocked to the next or episode. Or it's too intense, so then you're going to have to take breaks in between, that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, I think and, and like you said as well, if you are somebody that needs to watch the latest and greatest and be caught up, that would definitely be in consideration of if you need to watch things week to week. Or if you want to binge stuff, then here are some series that are already completed and are relatively new that you can just binge in one go because it's all Netflix. Now, I am speaking very broadly here, but what I would say to literally anybody in, in that given situation is do both week by week simulcast whatever's on right now as well as when having some that you can binge. So best of both worlds. Because my logic is the point of it is to get you invested into anime to see as much as you can. So it is, in my opinion, beneficial to see what is literally coming out right this moment, whether it's to get into the same conversation or to see where anime is literally today. Versus, oh, when you have when you're feeling like you binge or you you caught up to week five because now is week five, so you're waiting next week, what do you do in the meantime? Are you going to sit still? No. Here are all of the shows that you can binge along the way to wait to satiate your, your thirst and your hunger for anime until next week. So I think having best of both worlds so then it gives the person full control on all sides of simulcast and binge culture. That to me is like also very important because it lowers that barrier too. Yeah, you could definitely have a show that's airing right now and you watch week to week. Whilst in the background, you might have a show that is a bit of a slow burner, but you because of the fact that like the, the shows you're actively watching right now aren't releasing for another week. Hey, maybe now's the time to catch up on something that you've been slowly brewing in the background. And I would also go a step further in that like, don't worry if it's a webtoon thing. I don't know what that is. Or don't worry if it's a link click thing because maybe for the average person, it doesn't matter because it is a foreign language, period. Yeah, I think, you know, if it comes to watching anime, anime, right? Like, right. It doesn't have to be Japanese. It doesn't have to be like a source that came out of Japan. Don't be afraid to check out, you know, some Chinese animation, some Korean animation. God, I mean, Trese, right? It's Mm -hmm. uh, the, the the Filipino one. I mean, uh, Link Click, and that was the other one. Cinderella Chef, I think, is on Netflix. That is like a Chinese one that's really yeah, good I, about I cooking. Yeah, I think I saw that one too, yeah. Um, I, I saw it on Netflix. And was it Flavors it. of Youth is a very that good... I really like. Um, low key, I really like that one. Obviously, with uh, Korean webtoons and manhwa, there's plenty to choose from, especially nowadays. So, just don't watch No Please. Yeah. Well, there you go. Or to each their own, right? To each their own, right? But like... I just think you just got to keep going to find out what you like and don't like. And then after all of that to a certain point, you will then know if this is your thing or not. Yeah, you'll know whether anime is your thing or you'll know whether certain genres or certain types of anime are your thing. And so that's why like, whenever looking at these kinds of guides, immediately when I see a top 10 list, I know this is not a guide. Because it's just like you're not... You're Unless not... if it's top 10 methods yeah like the first one right like or at least like giving steps on like how to get into the the medium whereas like if you just straight up off the bat say watch chainsaw man watch bleach watch cockcatcher sakura it's like okay you are recommending shows but what what's so good about them why are these shows that like the, the average beginner should be able to get into i think the only and i mean the only restriction that i would give in terms of 
characteristic or demographic is blood and gore and violence. Because there are um, plenty of people that an, an edgy. love... Yeah, and etchy. It's like the, the sex and... Like, basically... The R18 stuff. Yeah, the R18, the rated R, the PG-13 stuff. Like, I would say that would be the only limiting characteristic because if you're not into blood and gore, there's no point checking out Parasite the Maxim, no matter how good it is. Yeah. Well, there's no point checking Chainsaw Man, no matter how good it is. If you're not into like the, the sexual stuff, then you know don't don't watch Bible Black or, or or Love Hema, right? I'm <laughs> I'm trying to save you out of this. You you dug your own grave there. But it's it's on the website, okay? I'm fair. never I'm never changing that. Sure, sure, sure. But like um, the the the, the yeah, you just like why bother being like oh you don't like Evangelion? Well, fuck you, because you're not an anime fan. I'm like, bro. Maybe you're just not into mechas, or bro, you don't want to enjoy yeah. watching you don't, some you don't like trauma what, yeah. unfold in front of you. You don't like watching Ghost in the Shell. Well, then maybe cyberpunk thrillers aren't your thing. No, that's not true. It's, or maybe not that shade of yeah. cyberpunk, right? Yeah. Maybe Akira would be your thing, just not the philosophical Ghost in the Shell. Maybe standalone complex is good, Yo, but not twenty forty seven. If, if cyberpunk thrillers and and Ghost in the Shell is not your thing, there's Akudama Drive. Yeah, right. there's also Edge Runners. Oh, you like playing video games? Cyberpunk Edge Runner is an easy sell. Yeah, at that point, so there is no tried and true way. Obviously, and to assume anyone, including ourselves, to have a tried and true way is fruitless, pointless, and almost like missing the point. What I would argue is the best guide is like teaching, like the methodology of how one should think in order to overcome this huge rabbit hole. Yeah, because there's always going to be people that like come from a different medium, right? Let's just say Western television, because that's mm -hmm. the, the the easiest counterpoint, right? The, where like the the style, the genres, the way they present plots, and also like generally the cultural aesthetics as well. Yeah. Do you like the One Piece live action? Okay. If you do, why don't you maybe check out the first couple episodes of the One Piece anime? Yeah. It, it, there's also, I guess, like in a guide, also. It, it, it's going to be super hard, but trying to maybe mold or change certain negative perceptions of the genre, specifically anything that is like school related, because the fact that the age thing and like mm. the over boobage thing. That's why. That's why I say it's hard, because I feel like that is a pretty big sticking point for a lot of people or at least it's an easy point of ridicule and criticism for people looking into and, the and, genre and, and to be fair uh minus nuance right i would say it's valid yeah but but because there is a lot of questionable content there is a lot of settings where it takes place in high school but yet one and, of the and, and, and now, for some reason all the girls have really big boobs <laughs> or there's always going hey, to be a penny surprise shot of surprise a lot of TV series and movies have a lot of really attractive people from all walks of life. Why? Because it is appealing. Whether you like it or not, whether you think it's fair or not, that's irregardless of the trend. You could say how much you dis you detest it, but at least for the time being and maybe for the rest of time, attractive people are going to look better than non-attractive people. Yeah, let's not forget that they casted Kirsten Dunst as a high school girl in Spider-Man, the original trilogy, where you like you know damn well that she's not a teenager, and you also know that she's also extremely attractive, which helps to sell the movie, but this is not like the standard high school girl. Yeah. Right? I felt it was like... like in terms of like her being like a mature looking woman as well. Mm -hmm. I thought like, you know, when they did the, the more recent trilogy of having... Um, uh, Tom, fuck, what's his last name? Tom Holland and having Zendaya as mm -hmm. like the current iteration of Spider Man. That was perfect because they actually thought about it. It's like, yeah, why are we casting way older people for a high school kid movie? Like, we should actually find the right kind of people. And there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, one of the teenage shows that I watched growing up in my teenage years is The OC. Yeah. And everyone there, as attractive as they are, and in high school, no less, are definitely over 20 years old, yeah. if not, like, older. Maybe even their 30s. Right? Yeah, but they're portraying themselves as high schoolers. So it's, to me, it's, like, not that big of a deal because it's just, like, th th you're limited by age in this case because 
you're portraying it. Yeah. Or you just find like the right people to cast. Like for example, Super Bad. Michael Sarah was like early twenties. Like he was like twenty twenty one. So that would have fit. Wait, right? who was McLovin again? What was his name? Uh oh. But God. it was his first movie, I think. Right. Yeah. He uh, uh Christopher Mintz Plass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, Jonah Hill has in the movie. He was like twenty nine. Yeah, the time. Emma Stone. Don't forget is also really old. <laughs> that's that's, that's, be, that's be a little bit nice about that, <laughs> dude. I fucking love Emma Stone. Yeah, in, in the context of being a high school, yes, based, yeah, she's not really old. Emma Stone, we love you. Yeah, don't worry. Like, I'm not trying to throw shade at you, but yeah, you, in, in Super Bad, you're just like with Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill. You're portraying high schoolers when you're clearly not in high school. No shit. To be fair, I thought it was a bit more egregious that they casted her as an Asian person in that one movie. You don't know which one, do you? Oh, wait. I do. You, you know the controversy behind it. Is that the one where she's Hawaiian? Uh, Yeah. she uh, With Bradley Cooper, I think, right? The movie was called Aloha. With Bradley Cooper, yeah, right? Oh, I can't believe I got that correct. Okay. Yeah, but like, look, at the end of the day, what I would argue Actually, is... Actually, to be fair, even like Emma Stone like regretted taking part in that project because she felt like she was pushing that white that whitewashing issue within Hollywood. Right. And so like for her, like, Hey, look, like we don't Not blame cool. you. We don't blame you at all. So, but okay. Going back to recommending anime. What I will also say is very early on, and this might just pertain to the anime industry in general. Animation studios, in my opinion, hold a bigger weight than other different forms of media. For example, Kyo Annie has a distinctive brand and style. Obviously, Studio Ghibli has Youthful a distinctive table. brand and style. Youthful Table, Mappa, to a certain extent, has a style. JC Staff, in, in some respects, too, as well. I yep. mean, that one is more like broad, right? But for yeah. example, Science Saru has their very distinctive style that you can sort of pinpoint, right? Uh, Studio Chizu, I think, which is like the Summer Wars guy, yeah. Hosoda. Like, to me, those are like something that. You can't say, oh, this is a universal picture. Mine is obviously like Marvel, for example, because Marvel would be comic yeah, related. Yeah, well, right? yeah. Anything that's Marvel, I mean, like, you also have like A24, which always has that kind of horror. A, well, no, low indie. Like, any, it, more, not so much horror. I don't know that they does Was it much Anchor? Horror. No, Anchor it, House. Uh, a A twenty four does more of like that indie uh, aesthetic. I mean, which one? A twenty four did uh, everything everywhere all at once. Uh, I believe they worked on Beef. No, they did a lot, but I'm trying to think of like the one I'm thinking of where it's like always affiliated with more indie horror. I always forget. Well, the horror movie they did was Hereditary. Yeah, but like that one's a one-off. By the way, really good horror movie. But um, I- I'm thinking of someone else or, or or another company. But but uh, or how it used to be Fox Searchlight. I would always associate with uh, 100 Days of Summer, Brick. Even though both are Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Okay. Basically, they were really good at finding indie films at the time. Basically, they were very good at working with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. Sure. yeah. We, we love you, too. We love you, too. Okay. Um, but I would argue, past a certain point, if you like Violet Evergarden, then a lot of Kill Annie stuff you will vibe with. Yeah. If you like JJK, you're going to like... I mean, dude, is there anything from UFO Table that we didn't like, but even though they're all kind of similar... In the sense that it's like gore, violence, action, thriller. I mean, yeah. we watched everything from fucking Fate Stay Night Do you like, all the way to Garden of Sinners. Do you to, like crazy, yeah. absurd, bombasticness? Studio Trigger is your jam. And I would argue other mediums don't have that brand association with certain style and flair. It's more down to directors. Yeah. Right? And, and, and script writers. Mm-hmm. That, that's essentially like how you would... Like, you don't associate like a certain studio with like a certain type, but if you say Michael Bay, right? Or M. Night Shyamalan, you mm. immediately know what kind of shtick or trope they're going to have. I would argue people don't really know Hosoda or Yuasa, but they know... No, that, that's what I mean, like in terms of like the Western side, right? Oh, like okay, you, yeah. You know immediately Michael Bay, you know what kind of movie you're going to be watching. Yeah, but right? I, I wouldn't know that Yamada song like l- did... Uh, Liz and the Blue Bird, but I would know that's done by Kyoani just by looking at it. I mean, you would probably know Hosoda just because his whole thing is making movies, right? Right. Yeah. But... And Motoko, Motoko Shinkai, too. But those are like examples that are like not of the norm. 
right? right. There's a reason why we did like director analyses on those particular filmmakers, mm-hmm. right? Because their style is very apparent based on the works they do and not tied to whatever studio they have. And that's why, for example, with studios works, I would argue in general, I can tell. Studio Orange, of course, you can tell easily based on 3D-ness, right? Clover works for the most part. You could as well. Uh, yeah, you could because of the the sharpness and the way it's cl- like it looks, right? Yeah. So I would argue uh, among all different mediums, anime studios are a good barometer if you're into that kind of work. Then you will like probably everything else in their catalog. Anything else, Will? No, I think this is a... <laughs> I mean, I I didn't I didn't know what direction this uh, this would go. I was just thinking more like, how do you feel about these guys? And it turns out that actually a lot of them are pretty trash, and only a few dumb. of them are pretty good. They're just dumb, most of it. But it also just highlights it's fucking hard to be able to recommend anime or even tell people how to get started in anime. It's now. hard and easy at the same time. It's just like, how do you start a podcast? Literally grab a mic and talk into it, how do you record start, it, how do you and start upload watching it. anime, just watch anime. Yeah, but, they, but like, then it's like, how at that point? How do you go about the nitty-gritty of that step? Yeah, like podcasts. What microphones do you buy? Exactly. How do you edit your shit? Do you need a sound card? What if you don't have a sound card? What if you only yeah, have... Yeah, is a USB yeah. mic okay? Or do you need an XLR, right? Like, when you get down to that level, then okay, sure. But the simplest answer is the most straightforward one. Just start. Yeah. Don't think too much about it. Especially if you already have a streaming service. Yeah. Regardless of whatever it is, like there's going to be some anime that you can definitely check out. And if it isn't your fancy, then you probably might not want to look into another streaming service. I think I'll just end on this note, which is no matter if it's your friends, whether it's online, whether it is uh, word of mouth, reputation, or just what you remember of anime, at the end of the day, the and again, I don't want to be cheesy, you really have to listen to yourself in terms of are, are you okay with continuing this? Are you liking it or not? You have to be honest with yourself. And maybe at the end of all of it, you don't like anime. But at least you give it a shot. Yeah. Because there's never ever a guarantee that just because someone recommends any any anime to you that overall the genre works for you. There There is nothing that can guarantee that for you. I just think it's better to know than not know. And it's better to do it on your own terms than to have everyone else dictate it to you. Yeah. They can guide you. They should not tell you the right way or wrong way. It should be your way, period. So I think that's a good way to wrap this up. Yeah. So thanks for taking part in this conversation with me. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so we just give um, credit where credit is due for music. Okay. Our intro music for BPs, let me just double check, is Orange by Signy, and our outro music is Weeping by Cushy. If you enjoy the music artists that we feature uh you can listening you can listen to them on spotify apple music or your music listening platform of choice and epidemic sound provides all of our royalty free music if you're interested you can use the referral link in our show description terms and conditions apply so i hope that anybody that's listened to this that you probably already have been watching anime otherwise why are you listening to this podcast oh no we're still very grateful but but why are you listening to this and not watching anime yeah. Yeah, it's more just to sort of highlight, like, in terms of, I'm sure that if you've been listening to this, you must have gone through your own experience of either getting started in anime or recommending anime to people. Who and let us started. know. We're also very curious because there there must be some other method that worked for you that we haven't talked about or considered that yeah. might actually prove useful for someone else listening that might want to get into it, right? I just think that, Will, do you think after all of this, with our knowledge and expertise, if you will... Do you think we have earned a PhD, a doctorate in anime? Do you think we have? I'm still finishing my bachelor's, dude. I think it's. I, Wait, I, we I, haven't even got past bachelor's yet. I I don't know. We're an uh, undergrad. I mean, you 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 started studying anime before me, so. Damn. Yeah. Would you you would consider yourself an undergrad? I I think that in terms of well, talking about anime, for sure, I I I'm probably at yeah, a but you might level. be a prodigy though. You yeah. might be an OPMC man. Uh, I think I, I'm at least a master's. I don't think I'm PhD level because I've known I know people that are more into it and more all about it than than I am, which but... is crazy because to me you're one of the most into it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, actually sure. when I think about it, it's like what you watch half anime, half or not majority is not anime, right? 
not 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 like putting you on the more, spot, no, right? More now, yeah, it's it's a lot more balanced now in terms of like. Well, actually, to be fair, no, it's more like if I if it's not GAP related stuff, I probably don't watch a whole lot of anime. For me, it's like ninety percent anime and then ten percent manga. See, there you go, right? <laughs> That's why I was like, like fucking. My mom asked me about beef. Yeah, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, I definitely been watching a lot more live action stuff recently, but that doesn't mean that I'm not able to talk about. I mean, I'm still reading and watching anime and Dude, manga. So. Despite all that, like. You know way, way, way too much for someone who... Oh, I'm definitely not the average anime fan. Yeah, for sure. And that's okay. And the other side is okay, too. Yeah. So what else is okay is you turn off your Spotify, your Apple Music, or whatever you're listening to right now for this podcast, and go watch some anime. So sit tight, turn your screen, log off this, catch you next time. No, but really, the no- these are... Must watches. Okay? The top ten must watches. We're really gonna end on that, huh? I, I guess we are. Yeah.